What is up, you guys? Shabbat Shalom. Um, it was not very Shabbat-y for me tonight at all. I, I did labor. I worked. So <laughs> I was in violation. I was an abomination. A blasphemous, wayward strag. I don't even know if that's the word, but it sounded like one. It sounded good. Hi. Hello, everyone. I know I promised to come on here tonight and we had a lot of reading to do and it was like, oh, we have so much to go over and now it's like, it's after midnight. Um, I had to come home and water my garden so that I wouldn't forget or like lose motivation. So I'm making this video a bit late, but we have lots to talk about. Um, big reading for the weekend and it feels like uh, so many cards came out and I was just like, I, this is so many more than I want to even deal with. And I thought about putting some of them back, but it all told this like uniform story. And I don't, I'm very like mindful about if the cards come out, they come out. Like, I don't know. Uh, there's like Oracle abuse is something that Colette Baron Reed teaches about. And that's when you, you're not getting the reading that you want or whatever, or that for any reason you're like, I don't want this card. I want to put it back in. And you just keep shuffling and trying to get a different answer. Or like, if you're just like looking to, to find the story that you want to see, it's like, that's Oracle abuse. So sometimes we have like a billion cards that came out and it's not because I am just continuing to shuffle and go overboard. It's just that they've come out in clumps together. So I feel that they are, they are uniform in their story. And when I started reading, because like the Radiant Sun cards, this is a new Oracle deck. Um, a lot of the decks that I've been using recently are, at least a couple of them. So I'm not super familiar with these cards. They have very specific meanings. So I was like looking up each one, just getting the context of the message. And it just, there was like so much impression on me that I needed to read out of the book. Um, if you look on my Instagram, I did do a slide show of each of the booklet pages because what I kind of summarize and talk about doesn't go into as much detail as each of these individual cards. Um, and there's so many layers going on. So I would highly suggest um, we're going to read them on camera. Uh, but if you want, go back. If you're that person that needs to read it for yourself, you can see these written out, um, on my Instagram. And it's like a two part post. Like you'll see the first post and it's our usual photo of the, of the, um, of the layout. And then there's a follow up part two and there's like some copy and text over it that says like part two of the reading. So you can see it there if you'd like. Um, and while we're just talking shop, you can like this video if you would like. By the end of it, if you hate it, you can take it back. But go ahead and like it while we're thinking about it. And subscribe to my channel. I think you can, there's just like a little button, like I think on this side of the screen, right under there, just go on and hit it. And then you can hit the little bell and that'll tell you when I upload because it's, let's just face it, no matter how consistent I try to be as far as times, it's all over the place. So you'll know when I make a video. And if you would be so kind, um, comment, share, um, any action that you take helps these messages get out into the algorithm so that other people can be helped by them as well. So yeah, lovely. Can't wait to get going. Also, just a reminder, I always forget to mention this, but there are things that you can find in the description box below. Usually I write up um, some thoughts about the reading. Um, there are links to things, like there is a link to To Be Magnetic under my description box, which I have manifested them having an affiliate program and I signed up for as an affiliate. So if you guys have ever thought about like signing up for To Be Magnetic, it's the thing, it's one of the things that I talk about all the time. It's this is what I do other than my Kabbalah classes this is like my regular thing. Um, so yeah, you can either, you can sign up through my link below and you can either pay a monthly membership of like $30 or you can pay for the whole year in advance. 
Um, but yeah, there's links to that below if you so choose. And sometimes people ask me about donating or patronizing me or tithing or whatnot. Um, so if you would like to do that, my Venmo is below and my PayPal as well. Um, yeah, and so let's get started. And I will never reach out to you uh, like the fit catfish people in spam and ask you for anything directly. You have to approach me. Um, to DM me for a reading and then like if you want to like donate to me that is up to you there's links below but I'm not going to reach out to you and ask for those things so just never get scammed um, it's unlikely but like I have been catfished by the most obscure people who I'm like oh my god this is so unfair like the robot is probably making more money than they are it's like so unfortunate <laughs> oh the future isn't it great Okay, so let's get to the reading. I'm going to just take you through the cards, and then I'm going to give you my general impression, and then I'm going to go through and I'm, we're going to read them. So from the Radiant Sun Oracle, we got Mars in Aries, which is impulsive, impulsiveness, followed by Mercury in Capricorn, which is organization. We got Mercury in Aquarius, which is originality. I'm like obsessed with, with this deck. It's just the most amazing. Such a good way to learn in-depth astrology placements, but also it is a very like, I don't know, detail. There's so many like cards and scenarios in this deck. It's amazing. It really widens the lexicon. Uh, we've got the moon in Aries, which is protection. And finally, from the radiant sun, we have Saturn in Scorpio, which is inheritance. Underneath that display, we had two of wands reversed, followed by the emperor reversed, followed by three of wands upright, just keeps going, followed by a million and one of the rest of the cards in the whole deck. Um, followed by Nine of Swords. And then Grand Finale, you guys. Drum roll. Brrr. Page of Wands. Hey. I have, I have this, this staff there. Okay. So, overall... I would point out that tomorrow is our full moon in Sagittarius. And so these cards are really giving me that vibe of like this fiery energetic buildup towards all of this like Sagittarius that just wants to like gush out everywhere. Um, Sagittarians are very blunt. They're very honest. Um, sometimes they can be insensitive just because they're just like, they just say it like it is. And they're, they're all about like honesty. Like don't lie to a Sagittarius. Um, they will like write you off. So it's all about honesty, blunt honesty even. Um, and a lot of times like they'll, they'll accidentally hurt people's feelings because they're just so like blunt that they're, they can take it. So they don't realize that they're that insensitive, but Sagittarians are also like super optimistic and they're willing to take a shot. You know, it's the, it's the archer. So it's the person who's looking you know, out at a vision and they can take aim and believe in themselves enough to like let go and take a shot at what they want. So they're adventurous. Um, they are, they like to broaden their horizons. Um, they like to explore and research and discover. Um, Sagittarians are very philosophical. 
So they love to engage and really think about things and unpack them and question them and, and expand their knowledge about things. So we're really expanding a lot of our self-knowledge. Um, tracking our plot line for the year as far as our soul growth goes, this year is that year where we sort of are reborn and we're starting like this new timeline where we're, we're beginning this whole new story. Um, but in order to solidify this new identity, this new level of self and this new level of consciousness, we have to embody all the wisdom and the transformation and the healing work that we've all been doing for what nine years now. Um, but like particularly all of this like... Um, intensity that's been going on for the last year, year and a half, two years, um, it's, it's all been culminating, right? And so now with this, like leaving, coming through eclipse season and Mercury retrograde and the Omar and Shabbat and Passover, all of that was like this crazy hurricane that was just washing through our lives with wind and rain and thunder and lightning just tearing down everything that didn't belong anymore in our consciousness, in our world, in our soul, in our spirit, in our emotional realm. So there's been a lot of deep diving and a lot of overhauls and a lot of what we call tower moments where huge, big, unexpected things just keep happening. Like like stuff just keeps dropping in your lap and you're like, wait, what, what? Like plot twist, what, what the fuck? That was an upset, whoa, didn't see that one coming. So like all this stuff has been going on to really get all the old life out of you to highlight anything that's still lurking around so that you can really be rid of it because this full moon in Sagittarius is the first one of this new cycle of the year. Like that Taurus new moon kind of finally launched us into the beginning. So this is the first kind of full moon finally in this new cycle of 2023, which is kind of just starting now, um, even though we're halfway through the year. You guys, do you realize that? We're at the halfway point in the year. And this whole year has felt like a car that just won't turn over. What is going on? Do I need to charge my battery? What's going on? Is it a spark plug? Like what's happening? So yeah, it's been death and rebirth. And finally the spark plug has been changed and the, and the car is going to finally want to start. So, um, every few weeks this year, um, when I took a look at the year ahead in the 2023 predictions, which I've gotten up through October posted, um, you can actually go and watch June now. It'll be very helpful. I was thinking about that today. I was like, I need to go back and watch the June predictions. Um, and I need to reshare them so that they can be, you know, um, available for you guys to see. But there's a whole playlist on the channel of just 2023 predictions. And so I still need to do November and December. But basically the whole year, we are in creation phase three, which is... The phase where you've been putting effort in and you've done the big thing and you took a chance and you put it all on the line or you did your best and it all went to shit anyway. And so the challenge of creation phase three is to not fall in despair, is to not give up on yourself is to hold the vision and certainty that your life can come together and you can step into your potential. You can align with like the purpose that is the purpose filled life that's going to fill you with fulfillment, right? But you can't give up on yourself. It's like starting a business. Um, if you, it's like you work and work and work and you build and you burn the midnight oil and you're like doing the late nights. It would be like if all of a sudden, like I'm this close to like, going viral or having a surge in growth or like this close to like finally being able to monetize and I just start getting wishy-washy and inconsistent, right? So that would be sort of a short circuit that would put me back in creation phase two or phase, you know, stay in phase three. 
So the point of phase three is for the universe to really test your metal, to see like, are you really serious? Are you gonna do whatever it takes? You know, like it's not to say like, cause this can get confusing. So it's not that you should double down, say, in a business that's like obviously a failure, like you can't continue on, it's just a, like a money suck. Like you need to have wisdom and discernment to know when to like cut your losses. But the thing about certainty is that you know that even though you may have like not gotten what you wanted out of this situation as long as you don't fall into despair like the universe will transfer your deposit into something else into another thing if there if the thing is still something that you're totally passionate about like this channel for instance for me like i'm still i'm gung-ho like i'm not slowing down like i know it's only a matter of time i know it's just a matter of like ticking away the hours. Eventually, I'll have the hours and the sub subs, right? It would be nice if it just happened really quickly, but either way, it's it's inevitable, right? So I'm going to continue on. But it's like when you make the big like you take the big risk, you put it all on the line, you tell the truth and it still just kind of all blows up in your face and you're like, "What happened?" That's the moment where the the universe is testing your devotion, your commitment and your resilience to yourself, right? to the path that you feel that you are called to. And so, yeah, it's that moment in the hero's journey where, you know, it, the, the hero's been beat up and it's just like the, the hero wants to give up and just throw in the towel. But instead, the hero is like, no, I'm not gonna throw in the towel. I'm gonna wipe the blood off my face. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna like, you know, do what needs to be done. So, Basically, as that pertains to our soul growth, the phase three challenge that we're going to continue to to be to to come butting up against is standing up for ourselves in this new identity, being able to be bold about this new self as it's challenged by others, right? You'll have people challenging this new level of personality that you have. They won't like it. They won't be comfortable with it. They're used to old you. They'll, um, you know, people will challenge the new ideas or new goals that you have. You know, every, like you might be tempted back into your old ways or, you know, you're, you might be triggered into your old, like, you know, um, impulsive, like anger issues or, or what have you. So it's going to be a constant like in trial by fire and initiation this year. Um, so just be mindful that every few weeks, every time you feel stronger and even more stable and more sure and certain about yourself, just give it some time. And then there will be a situation that will present that will cause you to have to fight for your transformation, right? For this up level, whether that be, cause it can probably, it, it probably will affect like each of the different kingdoms and, and categories of your life, right? So it's like, okay, um, you know, like friendships, work stuff, money stuff, like, all the things that you've been tweaking and transforming, it's like they're gonna come under like pop quiz time, essentially. So just be prepared for that throughout, throughout the year. But I believe that we are arriving at one of those moments again, right in time for that full moon tomorrow. And I think that we are being put in a position where the universe is putting a bunch of pressure on us and it kind of wants us, it's kind of like, bet you won't hit them, bet you won't hit them, bet you won't hit them. <laughs> like, do you remember that? Like, mama said, you know, mama said what? Mama said what? Like, and it's like taunting, like the universe is taunting you to stand up to it, to like, to be a King David and demand what you want for yourself. Um, be a King David and like show no mercy to your enemies. Like if you guys have ever read any of the Psalms, especially the ones we sing for the Hebrew holidays, we're like, dash my enemies brains on the dirt. Like 
My favorite is my favorite line. I think is from Rock of Ages. I think, and it's and it goes a little something like this. When um, you have prepared the slaughter for the blaspheming foes, then I will complete a song of dedication to the altar. When you have prepared the slaughter of the blaspheming foes, then I will complete my song of dedication to the altar. That is the kind of prayer <laughs> that King David is out there, like, spouting off. Like, he's like got a lot of gall and a lot of like freaking arrogance and moxie almost. And it's like, you need to have humility, but you need to be a little bit like presumptuous and even demanding even. Um, with that humbleness in your heart and in your ego of obviously like we're nothing but an empty shell, an empty pipe, but you have to demand it on behalf of the creator because you have to defend your purpose in this life. You're here to show up and do this soul correction for, for the creator, right? And so you need to fight for yourself, but you also need to know what battles are worth fighting and which ones aren't, which ones are the losing ones. So yeah, there's a little bit of encouragement to have a little backbone, um, but also have kindness and mercy and integrity. Stick with what you are trying to, like think about anything that you're faced with right now as far as challenge and obstacle. And bear in mind what person you are trying to become when you decide how to respond in that situation. Because we're trying to move out of affect consciousness where the wind blows and we're like, oh, 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 I have to act now. I have to do so. Oh, I have to control this. I have to do that. Instead, we're adopting a state of cause consciousness. And we do that by building affinity with the light, by breaking our shells of negativity, by untangling all the, the strings that people have that they pull on us. Like our demons are pulling our little strings all day. And our demons are pulling all the other people's strings around us all day so that they can say exactly the things that will get under our skin. And then their demons are pulling their strings and then their demons are pulling your strings. And so until you are self-aware and have self-control and you can be mindful and conscious and actually proactively choose with your free will how you're showing up, then before that, you're we're bouncing around like ping pongs in animal consciousness, like it, like pinball machine, just like oh, oh, in reactive mode. So we're looking to get into a, a conscious state of cause consciousness, of builder consciousness, right? Of affinity with the light. Otherwise, if you're not in control and possession of your thoughts and feelings, then other people will be. Simple as that. Anybody with an agenda who, ha who, who knows how to pull your strings is going to be in control over you. Um, same for the malevolent forces around who want to suck your energy by keeping you afraid, by keeping you um, forlorn and bemoaning and, you know, in desperation, right? All of that energy, like there are entities that feed off of that. You are a mill ticket for them. So we want to protect our energy and protect all the work that we've done to cultivate an, an, the, the state of inner peace that we have. Um, and to maintain that. Okay, so now I will get into reading the book. And I would suggest actually if you have if you didn't read the post today, maybe read um the copy in this description box below. Um because I think that like it may give you it may hit certain ways that me just talking about it, like I may not have remembered all the details that I did when I wrote. So um, if you feel so inclined and you feel led in that direction, maybe give it a read. 
Okay, we will start with impulsiveness. I will find it and I'll hold it up for you. Because some of these were surprisingly not what I expected them to be. Okay, so Mars and Aries. Action and self-will. A wild figure on horseback gallops as if in a race. The symbol to the left is one of the greater seals symbolizing the six steps of creation. It is a protector of all things. The horseshoe symbolizes good fortune, resembling the bowl-like crescent of the waxing moon. We are in waxing moon. It is going to be full tomorrow. Mars is the ruling planet for Aries, and so here it sits in its natural fiery element. This planet sign combination describes people who are energetic and impulsive in their every action. They feel a need to get things done, and this leads them to start numerous new projects. Acting before thinking inevitably leads to disasters, but these Martians are resilient, and wins always predominate over losses. People described by this card are somewhat competitive and display a need to be seen in a leading position. Basically, they are outgoing and feel more comfortable at the front with group endeavors. These Martians are natural leaders and take on this role within any situation which requires positive action. Mars Aries people take great pride in their abilities and are not happy unless they do, uh, unless they do more and quicker than anyone else. There is, however, a belligerence in the Mars Aries nature that can go over the top, and these characters may ride roughshod over other people in order to get their own way. Mars Aries personalities are at their best when they realize through experience that their potential for power works a great deal more effectively when they exert discrete control. When this card is drawn in a reading, it shows that some kind of physical and or competitive action is necessary for the well-being of the pers person asking the question. Events, a challenge that requires courage providing oneself by tackling the unknown. Oh, sorry. A challenge that requires courage proving oneself by tackling the unknown. Acting on impulse in a sudden situation or leading others with enthusiasm into a new adventure. Okay, organization. Okay, here we go. Mercury and Capricorn. Change, duty, perseverance. The farm scene may, be, may seem to depict the simple life, but only a rigid routine and application to duty enables the tangible fruits of the labors to be achieved. Oh, that's another thing I wanted to say about this reading. It was, um, it was about not getting distracted um, by things that are just sucking your time and energy and resources. Um, but staying focused and, and refocusing your energy and, and intention on your goals and going back to, to doing those like daily step-by-step -step routines that are helping you build, right, in that right direction. Um, Cap, uh, Mercury Capricornians are shrewd, practical, organized, and ambitious. There's always method in their th thought process and their um, instinctive ability to take things one step at a time makes for few pitfalls on the road to achieving ambitions. Such types always take a realistic approach to goals and rarely fooled by idealistic claptrap opt for the slow but sure route rather than the fast lane. Such a conscientious and patient approach to organization needs to be balanced with a sense of humor we all know the consequences of all work and no play. Oh, in our romance reading Thursday, it said lightheartedness was the, was the medicine for the day. Despite this personality type's severe sounding nature, humor is a common trait. And many comedians have this planet sign placing. 
The Mercury Capricorn type is prepared to spend time on education to achieve more professionally and considers planning this important. People with this combination communicate well with the public. They could be successful and find recognition in politics and social or community work. Just as Mercury Capricornians require recognition and achievement, they also respect authority. Often this admiration coupled with a desire to see tangible outcomes can be taken to extremes and involve name dropping and cultivation of company of influential people to enhance personal prestige. When this card is drawn, it indicates that hard, conscientious work is required in order to achieve long-term aims and solve immediate problems. Um, a need for extreme patience. Discussion about discipline and control. Taking a position of responsibility. Working with someone famous. All right, now Mercury in Aquarius. <clears throat> Originality, change, principles, humanity. The star and the bird in flight indicate hope and higher inspiration. The machine shows the complexity or the complex reality that can evolve from first transient flight of imagination. The thoughts of Mercury Aquarius people are constantly open to new experiences and ways of seeing. Those with such revolutionary minds display an ability to be unbiased, truthful, and objective. They have little time for traditional, socially, ex or sorry, they have little time for traditional, socially acceptable ideas that conflict with the facts or firsthand experience. So they can cut through the crap, essentially. The ability of such people to turn ideas on their head and see situations from a new angle produces flashes of inspiration and great originality. The Aquarian's freshness of thought owes a lot to the fact that little surprises him or her. People with this aspect teach well and learn well, but above all require good mental stimulation. The ability of Mercury Aquarians to see ideas in the broadest terms leads to a great interest in humanitarianism and an urge to seek a better life for all less fortunate people. Mercury Aquarians also display a constant interest in the innovative, especially new technology, and it is not unusual for them to have some ability in this field. A concern with scientific investigation is of paramount importance to this character type and leads Mercury Aquarians into an unorthodox discipline that would um, worry more conservative beings. The negative aspect of this combination is eccentricity taken to the extreme. When ideas become so outlandish, there is no basis for communication. When this card is drawn, it demands that the questioner takes a lateral view and finds a new approach. A new approach, oh, sorry, events. A new approach, an idea that necessitates drastic change, an unusual research result, a shock announcement, an invention, or an innovation. Protection, moon in Aries. Um, security, self-will. A gentle mother dotes on her child. The waxing moon, again the waxing moon, above with the symbol of the tiger below indicates an immense instinctive protective power of the feminine side of human nature. The combination of Moon and Aries indicates a powerful need to respond emotionally and immediately to a situation. This can make people with the planet sign, I think, I'm not sure if it's saying that the situation requires this or a person feels the need to respond this way. Um, yeah, I think it's the person's need to respond emotionally and immediately to situations. This can make people with this planet sign combination quite volatile and impulsive. 
expressing what they feel in a direct and willful manner. But because of this fluctuating nature of the moon and the speed of the action of Mars, quick flare-ups are fortunately just as quickly forgotten. The person this card describes has feelings that are strongly colored by early childhood conditioning and an intense need to protect and defend anything that represents family to them. Just as the moon's cycle waxes and wanes, so, too, so does the moon in Aries nature can be somewhat moody and changeable. Fluctuating with the environment, often the moon Arian has a strong impressionability that could indicate some psychic ability or potential for medium-like powers. There is a great deal of independence in the moon in Aries combination, but if the negative side takes over, this card can describe an emotional bully. The moon Aries need for recognition could also lead to approval seeking. In a reading, this card might suggest that the questioner watched that sympathy with an other's predicament does not leave him or her vulnerable to manipulation. I'm going to read that sentence again. In a reading, this card might suggest that the questioner watched that sympathy with others predicament with another's predicament does not leave him or her vulnerable to manipulation. One could find oneself having to protect one's position. The card may indicate a link with the questioner's talent for buying property or running a business from home. So the card may indicate a link with the questioner's talent for buying property or running a business from home. So specific. Events. Defensive action. Maternal instinct. Business enterprise. Arguments over property. Reluctantly moving, family upsets, or responsibility. And then our last of the radiant sun is Saturn in Scorpio. Okay, inheritance. Ambition, self-control, regeneration. In the distance, among craggy hills behind a lively town, a huge castle representing the past, tradition, and inheritance. Above, a classic maze has a unicorn at the center, a powerful and fierce beast that, only, um, that can only be tamed by a virgin. For Saturn Scorpios, finance, Finances and shared property are areas of life requiring self-discipline and responsibility. Somewhat perfectionistic or somewhat somewhat perfectionist in their work. I feel like that should say somewhat perfectionistic in their work. And able to take this to extremes, the people this card describes can earn the reputation among workmates and colleagues of being hard taskmasters. Those with this planet sign combination can exert enormous and persistent energy in order to achieve aims and accept a great deal of responsible or personal hardship in the process. Because of this ability, they find it difficult to realize when they have taken on too much to the detriment of their own health. So with this card comes a warning to watch the excessive drive. This sign placing indicates that Saturn Scorpios would be better advised, where possible, to avoid personal legal matters, such as litigation. They may, however, find themselves quite happily looking after other people's financial or legal problems, and in this role, providing they are sure to keep everything above board, the Saturn Scorpio personality can be quite successful. Because of Scorpio's rulership of the 8th house, there is promise of an inheritance of some kind whenever this card uh, drawn, is drawn in a reading. Negatively, the inheritance card can indicate the capability of the questioner to harbor deep, brooding resentment when he or she feels some injustice has been perpetrated. Events. Managing an inheritance. Dealing with other people's property. Selling on behalf of another person, an executor of a will, 
situations involving long and patient work. And also, the t it, one of these cards talked about self-control that kept coming up, and I think even this one did, and I just feel like the in our, our divine inheritance of self-control um, is coming up so that we can choose with free will instead of from a reactive state of subconscious patterning. Okay, on to the tarot. This is the tarot as interpreted by Eileen Conley, classic rider weight, pictorial keys. Okay, so we have, that's three of ones. We have two of wands reverse. Foundations laid may not bring desired results. Careful planning, make no fault. Move with caution, action halt. Have patience now, don't spoil, oh, have patience, don't spoil it now. Need to organize and bring order to your personal life. Don't allow anyone to dominate your thinking. That is a, that was reoccurring in multiple of these cards. Don't allow anyone to domineer your thinking. Remember, we're being initiated. We're being tested. Are you going to be able to stand up for yourself? Are you going to be able to be this new person without validation or permission or approval? Um, clarify things in order to prevent any misunderstandings. Sagittarius full moon. Full moons reveal. Sagittarius is blunt and honest blunt, honest conversations. Um, but be careful not to be hurtful because you can't take what, back what's been said. Once it's out there, it's out there. How many of us forget the horrible things that people have said to us? The pain might dull over time, but like, you never forget. It changes things. Some things you can't come back from. <clears throat> the emperor reversed. Positive direction is needed. Lack of control. Over and over again, lack of control has come up. Need for self-discipline. Butterfly flits and knows no way. Man must plan and work each day. Possible that you are feeling the weight of responsibility. Someone is becoming a burden. Someone could be after something you have. Be sure you understand the motives of this person. Do not tolerate anyone who does not appear to be self-sufficient. He can become a great responsibility. I think this reading, if it could be summed up in like one phrase, is don't suffer any fools. I pity the fool, to be quite honest. Okay, three of wands. Okay, three of wands, upright. Someone willing to give assistance, partnership, or cooperation is possible. Help is offered to those in need. Cooperation will plant the seed. Right teammate could enhance a project and bring required success. Someone knowledgeable can give you the help you need. Seeds planted for business venture can prosper. So it's like, Stand up for your vision because there are those who will see you and want to collaborate, but you can't throw in the towel at the last minute when things are just about to hit. Okay. Okay, here we go. Nine of Swords. Despair and anxiety are causing misery and a sense of hopelessness. In every life comes pain and sorrow, but life goes on to each tomorrow. Analyze the spread very carefully. Could indicate serious illness, tragedy, or a major operation. Inconsolable unhappiness. Unfortunate or sad circumstances. And then our final card... is the page of wands. 
Indication of a message coming from um, a near relative or close friend. Um, fair hair, red hair, eyes of blue. Someone young has news for you. Young boy, girl, or child. Happy news is on the way. Possible letter or telephone call that will please you. Um, I just happened to notice that this card has a Sagittarius disposition. So yeah, I just feel like tomorrow, um, tomorrow could be a big shift in energy for you as far as your self-concept and your sense of personal industry and self-esteem and your ability to cut through the crap of your life, cut through your own crap and break your patterns that have been holding you back so that we can move forward, right? So that we can all move forward unencumbered by our old stories, by our old habits, by our old tendencies and limiting beliefs and self-defeating tendencies, right? It's like we're finally being given a chance to overcome these things. And this year, it's like we're being given test after test after test after test. And it doesn't matter if we continue to pass them, they're going to keep coming until like October. I, I want to say that October we had creation phase four. I want to say, but it did look like the energy was starting to finally lighten up by October. So <laughs> we're in for the long haul, y'all. It's already started. Like we can't, we can't stop it now. The death has already happened. We're the imaginal soup in the cocoon and the chrysalis and the process of transformation is already underway. So there's kind of no turning back now. All right, you all, I hope you have a good rest of your, let's just call it the rest of your weekend. Um, I will be doing my very best to film our full moon workshop tomorrow before work and hopefully get it posted before work. And then after work, I'm going to do my best to do our secret teachings with Jesus video. However, it has been a very eventful week and there's been a lot of content to create and catch up on so I may or may not do secret teachings of Jesus but I may I probably will because usually whenever I'm tired that's the one that I know is probably going to be the important one to do so we'll just play it by ear but I hope that y'all have a good rest of your weekend ciao